So uh, we'll we'll see what happens with Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer here today on the broadcast. Uh, speaking of uh, what's happening uh, right now with President Obama set to speak tonight announcing reportedly expanded military operations against ISIS that's been openly armed by NATO and others and with Benghazi weapons. That has now been admitted to even by top generals on Fox News. Obama is set to ignore Congress and announce the serious strikes tonight. Congress has been trying to consult with him so they can be part of the decision. <clears throat> and I tell you, I won't cry myself to sleep at night if ISIS gets bombed. The question is, Congress is supposed to be in charge of this, then the president execute. He is not consulting Congress. This article out September 10th. President Barack Obama is set to ignore Congress once again by launching military strikes inside Syria without consulting lawmakers, a move that threatens to inflame the entire region, given that Assad government has repeatedly insisted it will consider any military activity inside Syrian territory as an act of war. Yeah, I mean, this will set the precedent for U.S. aircraft to be bombing inside Syria, who our government a year ago was trying to overthrow so that the coalition of radicals, 60 plus percent being Al-Qaeda affiliated, that's even the Pentagon's admission, could take the country over and blow up every church they found. It's just, it just doesn't hold water. It's bizarre. And it isn't bomb ISIS in Iraq, more than a few bombings a day that looks like it's just for show, like Clinton blowing up the, the Nigerian aspirin factory when he got caught lying about Monica Lewinsky. It really reeks of wag the dog type stuff, what's happening in Iraq. This will probably be on top of the presidential headquarters. They'll claim Al-Qaeda's in there or something. <clears throat> really amazing. I wanted to get Tony Schaefer's take on it. We'll see if that happens. President Obama is prepared to use U.S. military airstrikes in Syria as part of an expanded campaign to defeat the Islamic State and does not believe he needs former congressional approval to take that action, according to people who have spoken with the president in recent days. And you got different Republican leaders coming out and saying they agree with that. Obama is set to deliver a primetime speech tonight during which he will make the case for U.S. airstrikes inside Syria in the name of targeting ISIS militants. Is he going to bomb them on 9-11? Is this all wag the dog from Benghazi revelations that are coming out? I think undoubtedly it is wag the dog, but wag the dog away from what? What are they trying to distract and divert away from right now? And will there be this fabled terror attack that we are being told is coming inside of the United States on or before 9-11. I know this, there better not be any terror attacks because this government's going to be held responsible, at least by the public, I think, for having wide open borders while all this goes on and giving them the stinger missiles. <coughs> Guys, relax. If you can't get him, it's no big deal. We'll get him tomorrow or something. Appreciate you trying so hard. I see you guys stressed out. It's, I know the audience wants to hear from him, but it's not that big of a deal. Oh, perfect. As soon as... Oh, fantastic. Now, again, a lot of things have been happening over in the Middle East. It's a fluid and complex uh, situation. But I know this. Al-Qaeda was supposedly defeated, pretty much. A few years ago, and now we're told the son of Al-Qaeda, IS or ISIS, is taking over the whole planet. They're going into Africa. They're going to the Middle East. They're going into India. They're showing up in uh, the Far East. Uh, they're supposedly in Mexico. Is that true? And what is NATO's real policy when they help fund this very group to attack Syria in the last two years? I know that he's been critical uh, of what's been happening in Syria, backing these rebels. We have Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer on, uh, who is also a best-selling author. He's the guy that testified in Congress about Stratus Ivy. The Last Line uh, is his uh, latest book. He, he's written nonfiction, but The Last Line uh, is fiction, so I guess he can get more stuff in there and not have it... Um, censored and it just went into paperback again it is a new york times bestseller and has four and a half stars on amazon and i've read the book it's excellent just throwing that out there colonel schaefer thank you so much for coming on with us today we've obviously got a lot of questions for you sure alex great to be on thank you for having me 
Where should we start? The president's coming up tonight claiming he's going to strike ISIS inside Syria. What happens if Syria gets upset about that? They said they'll consider it an act of war. Uh, I thought we were backing these very rebels in Syria. What's happening? Well, we were. We were. I mean, that's the, the grand irony here. And, and one of the things I'm hearing, Alex, is going to be, I think, troubling to your audience and to you and me both, is the fact that he's going to ask for like $500 million to fund these so-called uh, militia. And so I'm calling it the, 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 the Guarantee of Adversary Act of 2014. So we will guarantee to have enemies trying to kill us for the next 10 years based on the fact we'll be funded. That, that's how insane this legislation is. Because if you like what happened in Libya, that's what he's trying to do. And so I, I have no uh, confidence at all of what he's going to talk about tonight. As a matter of fact, I literally just left the Capitol Hill where he'd been meeting with members and staff and, and had a conference on uh, an alternate strategy we're trying to put forth uh, that we'll, we will actually, we're going to make it public. We're not going to hide uh, our intention to try to get uh, some sunlight shined on this. But to your, your point in the opening, Alex, uh, the, the very people that, uh, that are now... Uh, the president's going to talk about trying to kill and roll back are the ones that had he got up and got about uh, conducting the airstrikes, destabilizing the Assad, the Assad regime last summer. Had we done that, they would now be in charge of all of Syria, and they would have had not only the army they've stolen from Iraq, they would have had pretty, pretty much the whole Syrian army, which is a, it's not an unformidable force. Well, uh, we're even hearing from the family members of one of the journalists who reportedly had his head sawed off by these crazies that it's the so-called good rebels in Syria that, that sold him to ISIS. And I've seen Pentagon numbers of 65% of the jihadis uh, there in Syria are al-Qaeda or ISIS uh, linked. What's the numbers you've got? The numbers are higher than that, and I don't want to get into it because I've been told exactly what they think they are, and I, I have to stay away from that. Well, let me tell, just tell you, they're, they're higher. And, and this is the concern that you and your audience, I think, really need to, to internalize here, is that funding these guys fundamentally may well help destabilize Assad, but when they're done with Assad, they're coming back towards us. Uh, there is no good to be to be had from funding these militia. And as you point out, Alex, rightfully, that these so-called allies, these, these guys that we were working with, sold the journalists, one of the American journalists, into to, to ISIS for purposes of their own, uh, own making. So there are, let me be painfully clear here, there are no good, radical Muslim militia. Anytime we fund something like that, it will come back to bite us. Uh, one of the, the policy points we just made to uh, members in Congress here, Alex, is the fact we have invested in a workable military organization in the Middle East. These consist of militaries that we have, set, we have helped shape. The Egyptian military, the Jordanian military. These are all militaries which we've invested in. They have set office to the, to the military academies, to the, the war colleges. And for goodness sake, why would we not want to work with them, such as the Egyptians, who right now, by the way, Alex, are doing what we should have done in, in, in Libya. Uh, the, the Egyptian military is now trying to re retake uh, the cities we allowed al-Qaeda to take in Libya, and they're engaging in these very, against these very sort of militia in the, in, this, in, the, uh, in the Sinai Peninsula, trying to help the Israelis out. So, again, you know, we, we tend to, to actually do damage to the very allies we have, such as the Egyptians, and yet we, we fund the these guys, and, uh, and, and and what we see here are, are again, the, the tragic results of, of, of journalists being beheaded, and uh, the, the, I was in the meeting with the, uh, with the, 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 the uh, Syrians, the, who have been displaced by ISIS, I was in a meeting with the, the Christians yesterday, who were just, uh, it's like, and, and Alex, let me be clear here, they don't want to come here, they just want to have help regaining their 5,000 year old uh, cities who they've lived there in peace for, for, for thousands of years. They want them back. They don't want to come here. And yet somehow we have allowed for this ISIS to destabilize the region. And again, it's not like they're going to just take the Assyrian, take Assad out. They're going to try to establish their own state, and they're going to come here to kill us next. All these years, supposedly, to take out al-Qaeda, being backed by Saudi Arabia and others, and now they've got hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, and we're told, oh, just give more money to the non-radical group that's the minority, and as you said, are radical as well. Uh, this sounds like more covert funding of ISIS and maybe a payoff to get them to stop attacking Iraq and to go back after Assad. I mean, there's got to be some real policy here, or is some covert policy, or is this really total ineptitude? Because I remember you here years ago when Benghazi took place on 9-11, 
saying it was an arms deal to right. to to get weapons to Al Qaeda. We just call them ISIS now. So give us the inside scoop. The, 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 the policy is what has been heavily influenced by, I, I believe, uh, what is the, the the issue we should have been dealing with the past 12 years, Alex, which is something called the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and um, as much as I think a lot of folks have uh, have been made to think that they are a moderate organization, they are not. And since last we talked, um, I met with uh, General Al-Tuhimi. General Al-Tuhimi is the chief of, of intelligence for the Egyptian nation. Uh, he is a mentor of uh, now President al-Sisi. And during my meeting uh, with him, Alex, we spoke about a number of things, and one of those things is the Muslim Brotherhood. There are, are clear and concise reasons, Alex, that the Egyptians outlaw the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood have been the reason that while we have met al-Qaeda and defeated them every, in every tactical engagement for the past 12 years, anytime we, we have to fight them, we win. The reason that al-Qaeda has not been defeated is because you have uh, you have the Brotherhood, who is the, essentially the feeding organization. They're the ones who are behind the scenes helping fund al-Qaeda all along pretending to be a quote-unquote moderate organization. An organization, by the way, that is uh, closely aligned to an organization called CARE uh, right here in the United States. Uh, the Holy Land Foundation, was an you know, who, who were members of the Holy Land Foundation were, were, were convicted because of their links to the Brotherhood. Uh, the, the, the same Holy Land Foundation had members of CARE who were unindicted co-conspirators. So right there is all you need to know is that the fact Well, let me that, expand uh, on that. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the monster growing the Al-Qaeda and ISIS heads is the Muslim Brotherhood, Saudi Arabia, and others. And so every time you cut a head off, five more grow back. Correct. And then now, why would President Obama and NATO, because I know there's an internal fight going on, it really made the military mad here in the U.S. That's right. why we got so much intel on what really happened from you and others. Bottom line, how did they think they'd get away with giving 15,000 impads to Al-Qaeda and to other jihadis? How do they think when they're running around, Reuters is now reporting, and so is the Washington Post, that yes, they have U.S. M-16s, yes, they have U.S. anti-tank weapons, yes, they have U.S. anti-aircraft weapons, and they're trying to claim, oh, they got them from the other Syrian rebels. How, who is guilty for this in Washington? I know that's a dangerous thing to talk about, but I know that's what you are discussing behind closed doors. Doors. Who, who's to blame? Well, well the, the administration, this is bad policy. This is a, a combination of, of, of um, uh, the National Security Council uh, under, under Susan Rice, Alex, is the equivalent of uh, eight-year-olds running around in Brooks Brothers outfit. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Seriously. Sorry. They, they have no clue. And, and then, then you have a radical ide ideology that, gee, maybe the United States ought to be taken down a few notches, and maybe if we just treat people better, they'll understand us. Maybe if we talk to them nicer and show that we understand, that they'll be nicer to us. That's, 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 that is the thinking here, believe it or not. And, and, and what that translates into is, is hugely bad policy. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you cannot believe, Alex, some of the, the nonsense I hear that comes out of the National Security Council. Well, when I see Susan Rice speak, I'm no military person, but I study military news every day. They talk like buffoons. A private in the Army would right. know more than these women do. I mean, and they're in charge of all this. Sorry. Oh, correct. Yeah, so, so that's, that's what we're dealing with, Alex, is that we don't have uh, any, any adults in the room actually doing anything. And, and as much as I'd like to believe that uh, they're, they're going to figure out a policy going forward, I have no confidence tonight that this policy that President Obama is going to announce will actually do anything to, 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 to deal with, with the, the Islamic uh, State or I, uh, ISIS, whatever you want to call it, in, in any substantial way. Because, uh, Alex, fundamentally, they've been supporting the very underpinnings of the whole network. It's not simply about ISIS, it's about Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, it's about uh, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, it's about Al-Ansal al-Sharia. It's a network, Alex, has sprung up from, from the fact that we never got to the root cause of this, which is the Muslim Brotherhood. I just don't see how a president is going to get up on television and claim he's going to run some airstrikes against ISIS and then arm the other Syrian rebels who've been fighting side by side with them to then displace ISIS. I mean, from the perspective of Assad, he can't trust what Obama's saying. What happens if Assad starts shooting surface-to-air missiles at the U.S. aircraft that go in there for these strikes? Well, that's going to be an interesting dilemma because uh, backing up Assad uh, is both Hezbollah, which is the uh, essentially the other 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 terrorist organization run by Iran, and our friend Vladimir Putin. And Alex, uh, I, I don't know how closely you follow my Facebook postings. I know we're, we're, we 